Hi, I'm Leo Brody. I'm making this video because I want to share my experience adding Surround 5.1 to my recording studio. When I started out with this idea, I didn't know how to do it and I didn't really, be, I didn't really see any information online on how to do it. The inspiration for this whole thing was a review I read of the Beatles' 50th anniversary release of their Abbey Road album, which actually came out a couple years ago. The reviewer was raving about the fact that he could hear on the Blu-ray disc, there's a 5-1 surround mix. But he was talking about how you could hear the individual instruments and the voices, and it was so much fun to hear this detail that you weren't ever able to hear before. So I asked myself, what would be, since I already have a recording studio, what would be the minimum I'd need to buy to add to what I already have in order to experience 5.1? I was never interested in the uh, home movie theater systems. I'm more interested in geeking out on my audio interfaces and microphones and things like that. And after digging around a little bit, I found out that the key to it was this device. This is called a decoder or a surround sound decoder. And this, this one is actually designed for 5.1. But basically what it does is it takes uh, a digital audio stream, which can come in either on fiber optic cable or on a coax cable. And it has a little microprocessor inside that decodes the digital signal. It actually demultiplexes the six channels that are in one stream coming in into six audio channels, which it then converts from digital to, uh, to analog, and outputs on these six RCA jack, RCA style jacks. You don't need a home theater system if you get this. Now, I got this online. There were a couple different models. None of the models had brand names that I recognized, so I just kind of took my chance. I bought one, but this one was under $50, and it perfectly does the trick. This is what it looks like on the back, and as you can see, there's these cryptic labels. FL and FR stand for front left and front right. It's like your traditional stereo pair. SL and SR stand for surround left and surround right. Those speakers are typically positioned mostly to your side and somewhat behind you. The fifth speaker is positioned in front center. In 5.1, the five stands for these five full frequency spectrum speakers. The point one stands for a subwoofer, which is called the Low Frequency Effects Channel, or LFE. A couple things I want to add about the surround sound system, the 5.1 system in particular, is that it was actually created in 1990, and by today's standards it's considered obsolete, but you can still find plenty of DVDs that have multiple surround sound mixes, including 5.1. And the good thing about 5.1 is that it's very simple, uh, the newer ones, like Atmos, require a lot of speakers, and it's very cool, but sometimes it's difficult to actually set it up correctly. So 5.1 is a nice compromise. The other thing I want to say about 5.1 is that the five speakers are all intended to be full frequency spectrum speakers, and they should sound the same. And if you imagine if you're watching a movie and a sound travels across the image, you want it to sound consistent as it moves from speaker to speaker. So you really should be using the same speaker type for all of the five speakers, this exception being, of course, the subwoofer. But in my case, I wasn't so concerned about that because my goal was to use the speakers I had on hand. So what speakers did I have on hand? Well, first of all, I have uh, these Yamaha HS8s, the pair of them, and they're already set up in here, so that was easy. Now, for the rear speaker, these are the Yamaha Stage Pass 300 speakers. They're really designed um, for sound reinforcement, so they're meant to project out into the audience. Nevertheless, they work well in this situation, and they also have their own mixer and amplifier built in. So that was good. That took care of four of my speakers. Now, for the center channel, what I originally thought I would use is this guy up here. It's an Aventone mix cube. Engineers such as myself use a speaker like this because it's not very flattering. It, you, it doesn't fool you into thinking that your mix is better than it is because it doesn't have a good high end, it doesn't have a good low end, it's just one speaker cone. But for this application, what I found was that it didn't blend well 
with the other speakers, particularly with the front speakers, because it just didn't have the highs and the lows. So what I went to instead, I went to these computer speakers. Originally there were two speakers, but I'm just using one, plus there's a subwoofer, so it has a nice full sound. Now the subwoofer was really a big stumbling block because I tried to use another pair of uh, computer speakers that had a subwoofer and it just didn't work. It didn't have enough power. So what I found instead was a subwoofer that's designed for home theater systems and it only cost $99 at Best Buy. It's a Sony 10 inch subwoofer, I think. And it really is perfect for this application. It did um, kind of violate the spirit of the thing where I didn't want to have to buy new gear, but the effects channel in the 5.1 surround system really needs to have something that has a good solid base to it. It has an RCA jack on the back and it's a powered speaker. So it was perfect and it was not terribly expensive. The encoder takes a digital audio in. So it's important that you get a Blu-ray player that has the digital audio out. So I had to find, I, I searched online and I found this one. This was about $80, I think, but you have to be careful because they don't all have the digital audio out. So that covers the minimal setup. And that's what I was originally planning to do was just take the decoders outputs and connect them directly to the speakers. But what I did in practice turned out to be much better, and I recommend it if you have the option to do this. And that is, I took the six outputs from the decoder and I ran them into spare inputs on my interface, my audio interface. And I similarly took spare outputs on my audio interface and connected them to the speakers. So that let me run everything through Cubase, and that gives me the ability to see what's going on on the different channels. I can solo and mute different channels. I can even remix the 5.1 surround mix it just gives a lot of flexibility that way and I can even take my own recordings and mix them for 5.1 although that isn't terribly practical at the moment because I don't know what to do with the product of that but it's fun for me to be able to hear my mixes in 5.1. Uh, I hope this inspires you to try this out for yourself. Nothing I showed you here is the best way or the right way to do it. It's just a matter of um, doing what works for you. But I think you'll find that it's a lot of fun to play around with. And I hope you enjoy it. And I did really love hearing the album.